Hello guys, um, it's Kasfin Yojuku, um, a software engineer, a blockchain smart contract developer. So uh, welcome back to the second part of uh, this video where I'm uh, trying to explain and break down um, the um, SafeMoon smart contract and how they were able to achieve the uh, reflective token stuff whereby when a user sends a token to um, another when a holder sends token to another holder a percentage of fee is being charged and from that percentage of fee that is charged it is reflected to other users that's the user, other users balance have been increased so in the previous video we were able to explain how the reflection it's the how the balance uh, is being got how user balance are being gotten uh, using the balance of and uh, all of that how the reflection balance are, are being gotten so in this uh, video we'll be uh, looking into the transfer mechanism how the transfer the flow of the transfer process and how the whole reflection uh, occurs and all of that so yeah Let's dive in. So, uh, and I also have a documentation if you, by the right side of my screen where I also documented uh, the whole process. So I'll be making this available in my in my um, in my GitHub uh, uh, in a repo in my GitHub profile. So yeah, so this is where we start. So we have gotten to the balance of now this part here on line seventy nine from. The, the right section of my screen so it says understanding how the uh, underscore transfer works so and let's say uh, let's transfer 100 token from the owner to let's say a user so let me locate the transfer function so the starting point of transferring token is the transfer function so let's look for the transfer function here so this is transfer function all right so the transfer function takes in uh, two uh, argument the recipient address and the amount you want to transfer right then inside the transfer function we have the underscore transfer and this underscore transfer using this image the sender uh, helper function it gets the address of the person that is calling this contract then it takes in the recipient and also the amount so for us to fully understand, we have to locate this underscore transfer function. So down to where it is. So let me look for it. Underscore transfer. Uh, and here we go. All right. So this is the underscore transfer function. And uh, it's supposed to be safe moon. Yep. So now, notice this function document. Okay, let's just uh, proceed. Now the underscore transfer function, like I said, it takes in the the from address is the address of the person calling the transfer. That's the person sending this the token. The to address is the address of the person that the the receiver of the token and the amount of the token uh, that uh, you the, the user is about to send. So on line one three zero five and line one three zero six, this way is performing. Uh, uh, okay. This way is performing checks. So the first check here is requiring that the address that this uh, that is calling this uh, function is not address zero. So address zero is like uh, a dead address where mostly uh, bond tokens are sent to, like a zero address. So and also ensuring that this um, uh, the amount you're sending is not to a zero address. That's a dead address where yeah, bond token has been sent to it also. Then also requires that the amount you're sending is zero, is greater than zero, sorry. So you can't send, uh, you, can't, you can't be sending zero amount to someone. So it's ensuring that you actually have an actual amount you're sending. So uh, here it now says, if um, the from is not equal to the owner and the to is not equal to the owner, require that the amount you're transferring is less than or equal to the maximum amount to transfer remember we set maximum amount we are in our state variable we set maximum amount to transfer as this 
So if the person that is calling this function is not the owner of this contract, the person can send any amount. But if the person that is calling this contract, so if the person that is calling this contract is the owner of the contract, the person can send any amount. But if the person calling this contract is not the owner, the person must fall, the amount the person is sending must fall within this range. It cannot be greater than this amount here, specified here. So let's proceed. Now, you know, he, this is where it's now checking. Um, you're in 256, contract token balance. So it's trying to get the the balance the, the balance of this uh, address. That's the token balance of this address. So I, I don't know. Is that the right thing to say? The token balance of this address. Yeah. So the 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 token we are talking about here is safe moon. So it's trying to get the number of safe moon that this address has that's the amount of safe moon that the safe moon contract address has itself so now when it gets that what's trying to do here is so we'll see how this uh, uh safe moon contract gets uh money so how it gets token so what once it does that it now say if the token uh, the contract token balance is greater than or equal to maximum token a maximum transaction amount contract token balance is equal to so it sets this back to the maximum uh, uh, transaction amount because remember that if you want to provide liquidity the liquidity you're providing cannot be more than this amount as well so now this is where it's now saying bull over mean token balance so this like is checking if the token, uh, the contract token balance is greater or equal to this uh, number of token uh, to add as liquidity, which is this guy, this guy here, right? So now, if it, if uh, all these checks pass, like this guy passes and not uh, in swap, blah blah blah, and also this guy passes and everything, what it does now is it sets this contract token balance to whatever was saved here so number of token to sell for liquidity sets the contract token balance to this guy you understand so because if you want to provide liquidity this is the amount you must sell to provide liquidity you cannot sell more than this so that's why it's setting this guy back to this stuff now you now say swap and liquefy it now passes this address there so this swap and liquefy now is where they swap the whole uh it will swap the token and provide liquidity so we are going to look at that swap and liquefy function now so this is let's this is uh so now whatever it does here it sends it to swap and liquefy right okay so now let's look at swap and liquefy here uh now we go to swap and liquefy now what swap and liquefy does is Swap and liquefy takes in the amount that's the contract token balance that was set, and it first this modifier checks if the the lock a uh, lock the swap is is set or is not set and all of that. So this is a modifier. Now if it takes in this amount, the first thing it does it divides it by two. So let's say the let's say the balance the this parameter brings in. Uh, this to this amount of uh, this returns this balance now what it will do it will divide this by two so let's take this to solid shell and see what it will give us so i return this guy so this will give us this amount so when you divide this by two it's going to give us this so now what it will do now now this is uh it has gotten the first half then the other half is the contract balance minus this one so remember the contract balance the contract balance is this so our first half is the contract balance divided by two to give us this to get the other half now is this contract balance again minus this guy which will still give us the same stuff so if we say if we say uh this so why I'm using solidity share so that we, we perform the mass operation here and we we'll see how it works. So this minus this will still give us the same guy. Now, it will now 
get the initial ETH balance of this contract. Now, the reason why it's getting this initial ETH balance of this contract is so that when it swaps ETH and add it to this contract, it will be able to track the new amount of ETH that was added to the contract. So that was why it get it got to the initial balance, initial ETH balance of this contract. So that's why it says captures the contract current ETH balance. This is so that we can capture exactly the amount of ether that the, the swap creates and not make the liquidity event include any ether that has been manually sent to this contract. So that's what this guy is doing. So now it will now swap this half. Now what's happening here now, it will now call this swap token for it in Uniswap. It will now pass this first half here. Now the way liquidity works is if you want to provide liquidity, you bring uh, a particular amount of safe moon and a particular amount of ETH. Bring them together and you provide liquidity. Now it wants to use half of this guy and the equivalent of half of this, this uh, safe moon in ETH to provide liquidity. That's what it's trying to do here. So it will now swap the first half for ETA. This will return ETA. Then it will now say new balance equals to the contract balance minus the initial balance. Once you subtract the current balance, uh, once you subtract the initial balance from the current balance, you will get the amount of ETA that you actually swapped. Then it will now add liquidity. So add liquidity now will now be new balance, which is the ETA, the amount of ETA you just swapped from the other half and the first half. You understand? That's sorry, the this is it here. So the other half and the new balance, you now use it to provide liquidity. So let's say 2500 safe moon gave you was equal to uh, two ETA, right? And we already have uh, or another 2005, right? Like, because this is five, uh, this is this guy divided by two, so it's giving you two five blah 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 so you have the other two five so in this add liquidity what you will have now is add what will pass here is add liquidity uh let me just copy this guy what you have here is add liquidity into two five uh into this guy comma your two ETH. This is how this is what you will get. So it will now use this thing, it will now use ETA to provide liquidity for this uh, amount of safe moon contract, uh, amount of safe moon token in the Uniswap um, uh, exchange. So this is what is happening here. So I hope I've been able to explain that well enough. So let's move back to, let's move back to uh to this this guy so now once this swap and liquify function is done it's passed then here it now set take fee to true now this take fee is set to true that means it's going to take fee it's going to take fee for this transaction right so this now indicates that the transfer should deduct fee now and i say if any account belongs to is excluded from fee, then remove the fee. So that means if it's excluded from or is excluded to, take fee should be false. Then it now proceed to this token transfer. This is where it now performs the transfer operation. So now it's taking the this uh, underscore token transfer is taking the from, the to, the amount, and this take fee. Because it will be using this take fee to check if it should deduct fee for this transaction or not so let's look at our documentation again uh, let's see okay okay i went down so let's go down okay so this is where we go we go aha uh -huh. so this is why i said liquidity is provided by dividing uh the contract balance into to convert one of the half to eta and then use the ETA that was converted and the remaining half in token to provide liquidity in token slash ETH pair. 
So in our case, it will be safe mode slash ETH pair. You understand? So that's what I explained here. After the swap and liquefy, the logic then proceeds to the underscore token transfer function. So this is where this is it. The logic proceeds to this guy. Then the underscore token transfer function takes in four parameters from address, the two address, the amount, and the take fee status, which will be true by default. Which will be true by default, but will be set. But will be set to false if the from or the to address is excluded from fee. So let's look at this guy now. Let's look for the underscore token transfer function. All right. So the underscore token transfer function receives this sender recipient amount and this. Now you now say if not take fee, remove all fee. So this remove all fee. Let me okay. This is on line one four two two one four two two. So let's let me take it to remove all fee. So the remove all fee is basically the guy that removes the fee and uh, let's go to remove all fee. So this is remove all fee. Remove all fee says if tax fee is equal to zero and and liquidity fee is equal to zero, return it. It kills this trans this uh, statement here. Else to now say. Previous tax fee is equal to tax fee and previous liquidity fee is equal to liquidity fee. It sets the tax fee to zero, sets the liquidity fee to zero. So this is what this function, this is this is the only place they use that previous tax fee and that previous liquidity fee. You understand? So that's what it just does. It sets everything to zero and all of that. The reason why it's setting this before setting this is because now. When it sets the previous tax fee to the current tax fee, which is 5, and the previous liquidity fee to the current liquidity fee, which is also 5, it now sets everything to 0 and 0. But our previous tax fee and our previous liquidity fee are now 5, 5. So anytime you want to re restore, all it just does is it sets the current tax fee and uh, current, uh, it sets the tax fee and the liquidity fee to the previous. Uh, to the previous tax fee and the previous liquidity fee. Remember here, it was set to 5. Here, it was set to 5 before it set them to 0. So if you're restoring it, it will just get this guy and set it back to what was saved here. That's what is happening in this logic. So let's proceed back to line 1422. 1422. So 1422, 1422, yeah, the token transfer. So once this guy is passed, now this is where um, another logic starts. So here now, look at what's happening here. It says, if it's excluded sender and not, so this is basically checking for different conditions. Now, if the person that is sending this token is excluded from rewards, but the person that is receiving is not excluded from reward, it should proceed to this to this uh, function transfer from excluded. If the person that is sending is not excluded from reward, and the person that is receiving is excluded from reward, it should proceed to this guy transfer to excluded. Else. If, is, if the person that is sending is not excluded and the person that is receiving is also not excluded, it will now be transfer standard. Now, for our case, the owner of this contract is not excluded from rewards. And the person, I assume too, that the person that is receiving this uh, token is also not excluded because we just deployed our contract. We have not uh, added anyone to exclude them. So the, also the person that is receiving is not excluded from reward. So the the function we are going to proceed to now, it's this transfer standard. This transfer standard. But before we proceed, know that at the end of this function, if not take fee, it will restore all fees, right? So now let's proceed to standard. Uh, all right, transfer standard. So transfer standard also takes in the sender, the address, the T amount, and at this point, it's called T amount. This is a transfer amount because we are going to 
work with a lot of uh, stuffs. So now, this T amount now uh, is the amount you're sending. Now, inside the transfer standard um, function, it now calls these get values. And this get values takes in the T amount. And the get value returns the arrow amount. Now, arrow amount is the reflection amount. Arrow transfer amount is the actual amount that will be transferring. And the arrow fee is the reflection fee. T transfer amount is the uh, actual transfer amount you transfer after you've deducted T fee. Which why this arrow transfer amount is the actual amount you the reflection amount you transfer after deducting uh, reflection fee. Then we have our T liquidity. So that's what this get value is going to return when you call this function. So we are going to look at get values now. But well, first of all, this uh, function is on line 1454. So we are able to come back to it. 1454. Now let's go to get values. So when we find, we highlight get values and find on it. So where is it? Okay, what is the function? Alright, this is the get value function. So the get value function takes in T amount and it returns you in two five six one two three four five six yeah six you two five six. So now the get value now also calls the T value. So let's look. Let's note where get value is. Get value is on line one one three five. So. So the get value calls the T value and the T value returns the transfer amount, the T fee and the T liquidity. So let's locate the T value. So that's why I said this thing might get uh, confusing at some point. So what's happening in the T value is pretty simple. First of all, we get the T fee. The T fee is, uh, ah, these guys are just taking us into so many. This is like a function. A function loop. Why they should just do this thing inside? They are just taking us, routing us to different function. So the T fee takes us to oh my goodness. So this um this uh, get T values is on line one one six six. So it's called get T values. So now uh this um. This calculate T fee returns uh, the T fee. So let's locate it. So the calculate T fee, all it does, it takes in the amount, uh, the amount of uh, token you want to send, multiplies it by the tax that was set and divides it by 100. So let's look at that. So uh, let's look at that. Now, our T amount is uh, this guy. The amount we want to transfer it's hundred. So the reason is the decimal is nine. So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's hundred, hundred of the token and the decimal. So now to get the T fee, the T fee is the transfer amount times times the tax fee divided by hundred. And our transfer amount is this, which is this guy, right? Multiply it by our tax fee, which is 5. We'll give you this. And this divide by 100 will give you this. So this is the T fee here. This is the T fee of this, uh, of this transaction. This is a transaction fee of this transaction. Now, T liquidity also... Because the T liquidity will bring us to calculate liquidity fee, which is the same thing. The amount multiplied by the liquidity fee divided by 100, which will give us the same thing. Now, our transfer amount now, the actual amount we are going to transfer is the total, the, the amount we want to transfer, we now deduct the T fee plus the T liquidity. So, this is the amount we want to transfer, right? We want to transfer this amount. And we now deduct T fee from it. This will give us this guy. Copy it again and deduct T liquidity from it. This will give us this guy. 
So this is the exact amount we are going to transfer to the recipient because it, the, before we transfer, the fee and the liquidity will be deducted from the token. So this is the actual amount we are going to transfer. So sorry, this contract is taken up through function loop. We are going to different functions, but this is the only way you're going to understand this contract. We have to touch all the functions that were involved in the whole process. So now let's look at this. After moving, after uh, the above values are gotten from the get t values uh, amount function, then it's now time to get into the reflection values by calling the get arrow values. All right, let's look back at our get uh, value function on line 11135. Line one one three five. Remember the get t values. Okay, let's look at the get t values on line one one six. One line one one six six. Line one one six six. So the only thing get t value does is to just return all these values, which is what we have done here. So first of all, it calculates the t fee by calling the calculate t fee function and it returns the t fee here. It calculates the T liquidity by calling the calculate liquidity fee and saves it in this variable. Then it gets the transfer amount by subtracting the fee and the liquidity from the actual amount, which is exactly what we did here. The transfer amount, we subtracted uh, this fee and liquidity from the actual amount and it gives us this. So that is what get T value does. That's just what it does. So it returns this T fee liquidity and transfer amount this is where it's returning them so now let's go back to our get values line one one three five one one three five one one three five okay so this is one one three five so we are done with the get the get t values now let's move to the get arrow values now the get arrow values takes in the t amount takes in the T fee that we got here and takes in the T liquidity and also is calling the get rate. Also, we have already talked about the get rate. So what this get rate does is just get the current uh, rate, which is this guy. It gets this current rate. Remember the get rate here. So the get rate just gets this current rate. So whatever the get rate result, uh, returns is what is being passed here, which is the current rate. So we don't get confused. So now, this arrow, get arrow values, we are going to look into that function now to see what's happening there. Now let's look at the get arrow values. So inside the get arrow values, we want to get the reflection amount. So remember, we are working with, for us to actually be able to reflect uh, to actually reflect the, the the fees on user's balance, we have to work with reflection amount, not the transaction amount. And to get the reflection amount is by multiplying the transaction amount by the current rate. So let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. So now, get rate will return this current rate, which is what we have here. So and if you if I highlight this, you see that. It's the same with our current. Where is it? It's the same with. Uh, it's the same with our current rate. Where is our current rate? Where is this guy? Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I'm highlighting current rate. Let's look for the current rate here. I will put that around. Uh, so yeah this is our current rate see it's highlighted in full it's highlighted here so this is our current rate so now let's proceed uh let's proceed let's proceed where is this guy okay this is it our current rate now we want to get the reflection amount using the transaction amount transaction amount is still this guy which is remember one two three four five six seven eight nine so that is 100 plus a decimal. Now, an arrow amount is transaction amount times current rate. And our transaction amount is this guy. So if you multiply the transaction amount with the current rate, our reflection amount will be this guy. Right? So we have gotten our reflection amount here. 
Then let's go to our reflection fee. Our reflection fee will now be the transaction fee multiplied by the current rate. Our transaction fee, we have already gotten it in this guy, and our current rate is here. So we now say this transaction fee multiplied by current rate to give us our reflection fee. So this is our reflection fee here now. So now let's calculate our reflection liquidity. Our reflection liquidity is equal to transaction liquidity times the current rate. Transaction liquidity is this guy multiplied by the current rate. It will still be the same with the reflection fee. So this is our transaction uh, reflection liquidity. So now let's calculate the actual reflection transfer amount. This is the actual amount we are going, the actual reflection amount that will be transferred. So now this will be the reflection amount minus the reflection fee and the uh, reflection liquidity. So that is why we have reflection amount will now be this is the reflection uh, uh, the total amount in reflection that we want to send that's the uh, and here we are subtracting the reflection uh, fee and the reflection liquidity so this is the actual transfer reflection amount we are going to transfer so that means that means Reflection owned of the sender. So, okay, before we proceed, now T value returns the reflection amount, the reflection transfer amount, and the reflection fee. That is what T value returns, right? Uh, sorry, that's what uh, get arrow values returns. So, the get arrow value returns reflection amount, reflection transfer amount, and reflection fee. So, now let's get go back to our get value on line 1135. I hope this whole navigation through the functions is not confusing you. Like one, like one, one, three, five. So now get value. So now we have gotten uh, all the values we need. So the get values just uh, calls this function and this function that performs all those stuff to give us all these tra uh, TADs, TDs, and TDs, and the arrow amounts, arrow transfer amount, and the arrow fee. Then it returns all of them, returns everything. So this way it's returning all of them. So now, and where are we using this uh, this guy? We are using it in the uh, uh, transfer standard. So where is that transfer standard? I think that's on like one four five four. So one four one four five four. So see, I'm keeping track of the line so that we'll be able to. To locate it, so line one four five four. Yes, where are you? All right, one four five four. This is the actual guy. So now get values gets all these guys, which we already done the calculation here. So with all this now, this is where it now does the actual calculation. So it now says arrow owned of sender will now be equals to the arrow owned of the sender minus the arrow amount. So, arrow owned of sender is equal to the arrow owned of the sender minus the arrow amount. Now, remember the arrow owned of the sender is the total arrow owned which we assign to the sender in the uh, constructor. And the arrow owned now is, uh, is this guy. Arrow owned of sender is equal to arrow amount. So, yeah, where is the yeah, arrow owned of sender is equals to the sub uh, is equal to the arrow owned of the sender minus the arrow amount. And what is the arrow amount? This guy that is highlighted, let's see now. Well, let's see the arrow amount. This is the arrow amount that is highlighted. So, so this is it, the arrow amount. So we are now subtracting the arrow amount from the total amount is the total arrow amount the sender holds. So if we do this, we say this minus minus the arrow amount, we are going to get this. So this is what we are getting. And if you copy it, this is the amount. The, this will now be the new balance of 
the owner. This will now be the new balance of the owner. Then, once that is done, it will now say arrow owned of the recipient is equal to the arrow owned of the recipient plus the arrow transfer amount. Note that it is not transferring the arrow amount to the recipient, it's transferring the arrow amount, and the arrow am uh, is transferring the arrow transfer amount. And the arrow transfer amount is the arrow amount minus the fee, the arrow fee, and the arrow liquidity. So it will now add this one to the owner, to the recipient. So this is it. Arrow owned of recipient is equal to arrow owned recipient plus arrow transfer amount. And we just deployed this contract so the recipient will have zero balance. So we now say arrow owned of recipient is equal to zero plus the uh, the arrow transfer amount. So the recipient balance, the arrow uh, reflection balance will now be this new this new uh, balance here. Now let's look at how the reflection now works. Since this has been updated, the reflection balance of the owner has been updated and the reflection balance of the user, the receiver has been updated. So what now happens? Where comes the whole reflection? How does the balance of the user now increase uh, whenever tra transaction is being done and all of that? So now look at these two functions here. Take liquidity. Remember when we were trying to perform the transfer operation, there was a part in the code where it checks the balance of the contract of the safe moon contract to see if it has um, safe moon token. Now, how does that this contract balance get safe moon token? It is from this take liquidity. Now, if we look at this take liquidity, let's go to take liquidity. Now, take liquidity, where are you? Now, this is the take liquidity function. Take liquidity gets the current rate. It now uses this current rate. Remember that to get the reflection liquidity, you multiply the uh, transaction liquidity by the current rate. So it now gets the reflection liquidity. I now say, if arrow owned of address this is equal to, okay, sorry, it's not an if statement. This code is entering my eyes too much. It does say, if arrow owned, uh, sorry, it does say, arrow owned of address this should now be equal to arrow owned of address this plus refresher liquidity, which means, remember, this is a new contract that was deployed. So, our reflection liquidity for this contract will be zero plus the arrow liquidity. And our arrow liquidity is gotten by transaction liquidity times our current rate. And this is our current rate here. So, when you multiply this guy, you get this. So, this is our arrow liquidity here. So you now add this arrow liquidity to the balance, the arrow, uh, the arrow owned balance. That's the uh, the reflection balance of this contract. So you now add it to it. Now this contract now has safe moon token in it using this uh, reflection balance. This is how the safe moon token is being added to this contract each time a user transacts. Now, it has this uh, reflection balance. Let's go back to line 1454. So, line 1454. 1454. So, this 1454. So, now we have seen this take liquidity takes the uh, T liquidity use it to calculate the refresher liquidity and add it to the uh, contract address, the safe moon contract address. Then this is where the reflection happens. So now this function is now called the reflect fee. The reflect fee takes in the arrow fee and the T fee, right? So the arrow fee is the reflection fee that was calculated 
from that transaction and the T fee is a transactional fee, the normal transactional fee that was calculated. So let's look at the refresher fee. Let's find it. Let's look for it. This is the reflection fee, the reflect fee uh, contract. So what this reflect fee contract does is it gets the ARU total. Remember, uh, our ARU total is, I think I should just open this here on this uh, remix so I, I won't be navigating up and down. Remember, our ARU total was already saved here right and in our constructor we assigned the user balance the uh, owner balance to arrow total and when we were calculating when we were calculating uh the 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 what is it called when we were calculating the current rate the current rate is equal to arrow supply divided by t supply and ARU supply is equal to ARU total. Are you paying attention? ARU supply is equal to ARU total. So that means here now when you subtract the ARU fee from ARU total, ARU total here will reduce anytime someone wants to check their balance again, which automatically leads to a reduction in ARU supply. And if ARU supply is reduced, when you're calculating current rate, the current rate will also be reduced because T supply is fixed. T supply is our total token supply. T supply is fixed. But ARU supply is, is reduced each time a transaction happens. So that means the ARU supply, the next time someone wants to check their balance, will be will, would have been the ARU total uh, subtract uh, where you would have been you subtracted the, the ARU fee of the previous transaction from the ARU total. So this now will affect our current rate. And now, when the current rate is affected, remember balance of is your balance divided by the current rate. So if let's say let me use this. If maybe you have your your balance was uh let's say your balance was one your balance was one with five zeros one two three four five right divided by your rate let's say your rate is your rate is your current rate is three right and you press enter oh what am i doing oh sorry 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 this is, uh, there is no uh, floating number in Solidity. So let's say this is uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you divide this by, by 100, right? Your current rate is 100. You now do this. This will give you 1,000, right? This will give you 1,000. But now, the down, let's say, after a transaction happens, your current rate was reduced by 10. Sorry, was reduced and the new current rate is now 10, no longer 100. Your balance will now be this same 1000 divided by 10, which will now be this guy. See, it's increasing. So let's say this is your reflection balance and you're dividing by current rate. This will now be your actual balance. And your reflection balance didn't change, right? But now when someone else performs a transaction, the, the current uh, rate changes because the, the, uh, the ARU total is being deducted. So now if you carry your reflection balance again and divide it by that same current rate, you see that your balance is increasing without you doing anything. So this is what they are doing here. So now, inside that um, that function, is now calling the reflect fee. What the reflect fee just does is, it subtracts the arrow fee from the arrow total. And it also adds the fee to the T total fee. So this T total fee just to keep track of all the fee that has been collected from, uh, from this contract. So this is where the reflection happens.
this guy now this guy on line one one two three so once you subtract this the next time someone wants to check their balance the rate will be will reduce and if the rate has reduced your balance will increase because remember that balance of is equal to your aru amount divided by your current rate so this is just what safe moon is doing this is what they are doing that's how they were able to achieve this whole um this whole uh, uh reflection stuff i believe i've been able to explain this better enough so this is it i think i explained it now looking at the reflect fee function the reflect fee function subtracts the arrow fee from the arrow total and it also increments the t fee total by adding the t fee remember that the current rate is gotten by dividing the arrow supply which is arrow total by the t supply which is the t total and the balance of an address is gotten by dividing the arrow amount of that address by the current rate this means if the arrow total is reduced the arrow supply will also be reduced too if the arrow supply is reduced then the current rate is also reduced too because the t supply is always fixed hence the reduction in arrow supply means balance of an address will be increased because the balance of an address the balance of an address is uh, balance of an address is equal to the arrow amount of that address divided by the current rate so if our arrow amount didn't change but the current rate keeps reducing automatically the balance of our address will also increase so this is exactly what is happening here so you can go further to now calculate the new balance of the receiver of the recipient using the new updated uh, current supply so in the reflect fee, once this is done arrow total will now be the current arrow total minus the reflect fee so the new arrow total will be this so to calculate the new uh, okay and uh, t fee total will now be t fee uh, total plus t fee uh, and our initial t fee total is zero plus this this will be our t fee so this is the flow of safe moon reflection now let's check let's check uh the balance of the recipient using the arrow total value now current rate will now be arrow supply divided by t total which will now be t supply is this arrow supply will now be the new arrow total so current rate will now be this divided by this then you cannot proceed to getting your balance so this is the flow of how the whole safe mode stuff works so you can take out time to look at uh, other functions so for your own assignment to see if you really understand this take out time so let's go back to line 1454 line 1454 1454 where are you so let's go back to line 1454 so 1454 here is it uh, 1454 okay I've, uh, so it's now on line 1456 now this guy now is the transfer standard this is transfer standard so this is just one of the transfer remember this transfer is only triggered if the both uh, addresses involved that's the from and the two address uh, are not excluded from reward if the both of them are not excluded but if uh, if maybe one is excluded and the other one is not excluded then you can take time to look at the transfer to excluded the transfer from excluded and uh, the transfer both excluded function and see how they both work but the bottom line is they all work with this same take liquidity and reflect fee and this is the main guy this reflect fee is the main guy that that controls how the reflection works because it is this guy that subtracts the reflection fee from the uh, arrow total that makes the rate to continue to change and once the rate keeps reducing your the fee will continue keep uh, users will continue to get more uh, token in their 
wallet because their arrow total uh, their arrow uh, their arrow uh, amount will keep increasing and you know your balance of is gotten from your arrow amount by performing some kind of calculations which we already did here so i believe i've been able to break down the safe moon contract for you and if you understand how this con this contract works very well you can manipulate it and modify it anyhow you want to suit whatever kind of reflection the key you want to achieve so i was able to understand it and i was able to um uh build or create the particular token the the the, the, the client wanted with their own kind of reflection uh modification their own kind of uh, fee and percentage calculation and all of that so thank you very much for staying up to this point i hope you were able to learn uh please don't forget you can uh don't forget to subscribe uh to my youtube channel i i i'll be giving you content quality content uh, more often uh in terms of smart contract and code related and all of that thank you very much bye for now peace out